Heaven's Vault is a narrative-driven adventure game developed by Inkle and published in 2019. You play as Alia El Azra, an archaeologist born in the slums of Elbereth, who's been tasked with investigating the disappearance of roboticist Yuniki Renba, with the assistance or oversight from a robotic companion called Six. Heaven's Vault plays like a point-and-click adventure game, but with a few key differences, and the one that's relevant to this video is the puzzle design. Typically, in adventure games, the story is broken up by puzzles that involve picking up items, examining objects, and using the right combination of items in the right place on the screen to affect some advantageous change in the game world. Damn! However, these puzzles have always had one major problem. They suck. While not always terrible, these puzzles frequently feel unfair or frustrating when their solutions are convoluted, based on faulty logic, and require tedious screen searching. And even in the very best adventure games, this can be a problem. I still play some adventure games, but I don't play any without a phone handy to Google solutions. Heaven's Vault does away with this design entirely, instead basing the puzzles around the game's unique selling point. Heaven's Vault is a game where you learn to translate an ancient hieroglyphic language. The idea of learning or translating new languages in a video game isn't a new idea. For example, in Rise of the Tomb Raider, Lara learns three ancient languages, Mam, Quechua, and Yucatec. But you don't learn them with her. Instead, you walk up to ancient murals and gain a few experience points in that language. Similarly, in No Man's Sky, finding knowledge stones will teach you a new word from one of the game's alien languages. But really, your character is awkwardly learning a language word by word in a fixed order, you're not doing anything. Language learning is there, but it's a light theme on top of what are essentially collectibles. Heaven's Vault is different. Heaven's Vault wants you to read the language. The only other video game that I can think of with a similar mechanic is Sethian, a minimalist looking game about trying to communicate with an ancient computer in Sethian script, piecing together the language through some initial notes and the conversations that you hold with the computer. It's rather short, it can be awkward to construct questions that the computer understands, and the story is somewhat limited, but it's a fascinating game nonetheless with a well constructed fictional language. This is the sort of language Inkle looked to implement in a more expansive game. So, how does Heaven's Vault create a fictional language that you can read? It's worth noting at the start that Heaven's Vault has two approaches that make this language easier to translate. Firstly, Ancient is based on English. It's a language with its own vocabulary and hieroglyphic writing system, but its grammar is taken directly from English. Ancient uses adjectives, verbs, pronouns in the same way that English does, and even shares English homonyms, like using the same word for there is and over there. This may be slightly disappointing for linguists, but it does make a more realistic challenge for a video game, as it means that Ancient can be translated word for word. And when you do translate new words, Heaven's Vault gives the player options to choose from. It won't tell you whether what you've picked is right or wrong, you'll have to see the word make sense in multiple translations before adding it to your dictionary, but these options are the main way you will expand your vocabulary, and without them, Heaven's Vault would simply be too difficult. The founder of Inkle, John Ingold, describes this as the guitar hero of language learning. You aren't really playing a guitar, but you're getting the experience that you can master in hours rather than years. So, Heaven's Vault assists you by creating an approachable language and giving options for vocab, but that alone isn't enough to start reading Ancient. For example, how do you know which of the given options is the right translation? The first approach to translating words is by using contextual clues through the story and the locations. Heaven's Vault is a narrative game where you will frequently be learning about the history of the world through conversations and finding relics, and these can give hints for potential translations. In the first moments of the game, you are handed an eagle wing brooch with an inscription on it. Alia identifies it as an Empire Period piece, and when you go to translate the inscription, one of the words available is Emperor, so maybe that's a good first guess. If you find an inscription over a hearth, maybe you can infer that one of the words will mean fire. Clues can also come from the story. 
Six, the robot tells you that he was discovered underground, so if you see a translation that suggests a robot might have been buried, you've got a contextual reason to pick that word, rewarding players for engaging in the dialogue and paying attention. Your contextual guesses won't always be correct, but they are a good starting point. Similarly, you can figure out some translations by understanding English. If you translate the second word on the brooch as Emperor, then the full translation can either be Holy Emperor, which makes sense, or Friend Emperor that doesn't, letting you make a good guess at the other word as well. But these contextual clues, while they do help you to guess the correct words and slowly build your vocabulary, aren't really learning to read the fictional language, it's just a useful way of making better guesses when given the opportunity. The reason that players will be able to start learning the language and translating new words before the options appear on screen is the way that Ancient is constructed. So, in that first inscription that you see, you probably use contextual and grammatical clues to translate the words Holy and Emperor, although at this stage of the game it isn't unreasonable for you to have guessed otherwise. But looking closer at the words, you notice that both contain this symbol that looks like a hook, and this other symbol that looks like the hook but with a supporting leg. Not too long later, if you follow the likely route at the start of the game, you find a statue you know to be of a goddess with another inscription and another similar looking word. It's actually almost exactly the same as the word you translated as holy, but without the little shape at the beginning, and again, through context, you can guess that this new word translates to goddess. Goddess, Holy, and Emperor, three different words that all use the same two symbols. Inspired by hieroglyphics and some Asian languages, Ancient is an ideographic language using symbols that represent meanings rather than phonetic sounds, and creates words by combining meanings together. Goddess, Holy, and Emperor aren't the same word, but they do have similarities. Goddess and Emperor are both beings, and all three are related to concepts of divinity and reverence. These are three words that you can group in the same semantic field, words with either similar meanings or relating to a similar subject. When you see another word with one of these shapes, this is what you'll be thinking about. Are any of the options given related to the words I've seen before? The game encourages this by listing similar words that you've already translated at the top of the screen. This new word looks like goddess, and it looks like holy, so even though I don't yet know what these first symbols mean, I can assume it's a word that fits into the same semantic field. At no point does Heaven's Vault tell you what any of these symbols are, instead it's the player who starts to make connections between repeated symbols, and assign them meaning as they find more inscriptions and translate more words. To show you a clip of how these symbols are combined to create new words, I'll just show you a clip of a joke John Ingold wrote for his talk at EGX. So if you have something like esh is light, chi is time, bar is thing. Let's say we've got that. Let's build a language that uses that for gameplay. So esh chi is light plus time, so maybe that means day. This is the compound thing from that structure that we had before, right? By esh is a thing of light, that's a lamp. By chi, that's a thing of time, that's a clock. By esh chi, that's a thing of day, which is the sun. Uh, esh chi esh, that's the day of light, that's daylight. How far can we push this bizarre idea? Well, obviously esh chi esh chi is daylight time, which is daylight savings time. <laughs> this is great, right? In addition to the symbols having thematic meanings, some symbols represent syntax and structure. Ancient is based on English, and so needs some way to differentiate between parts of speech. A symbol of a person and a closed eye could mean asleep, or sleeping, or sleep. So Ancient needs to be able to distinguish between adjectives, verbs, and nouns. One of the symbols that the player will most easily be able to translate looks like a question mark, and fittingly shows when words in Ancient are asking questions like who, what, or when. And this is how the player starts to read Ancient. Some words you'll just learn to recognise, shorter, frequent words like I, you, or and. But even though longer words are complicated, Individual symbols are still manageable, and over the course of a 15 to 20 hour game, the player has time to learn and give meaning to a lot of symbols. This one is about people, this one is about time, this one refers to water, this one means a negative, this one means multiple, and so on. Although to avoid spoilers, those aren't symbols from the game, those are wingdings. But once the real symbols are embedded in your brain, words spring off the screen from the combinations. 
Death is not life. Darkness is not light. Ask is speak plus question. A palace is the place of an emperor, and an empire is the place of an emperor with many people. A river is water that moves, and a boat is thing that moves on a river. And while they sound quite vague, these words can be figured out just by seeing the symbols. It won't always work, it's not going to be easy to translate person snake that takes things as thief, or even animal close to the ground as snake in the first place. Those are words that you would just have to remember and recognise, but it will work frequently enough for you to start reading words unassisted, without needing the options, and when that happens it feels fantastic. At the start of the game it's Alia, the character who has an intuition about ancient and can come up with ideas for translations, but by the end you have this intuition as well. So, how does Heaven's Vault allow you to translate a fictional language? It starts by grounding the language heavily in English for familiarity. It creates a consistent language by building words from symbols representing themes and syntax. It helps the player out by giving them options when translating to Guitar Hero the language and create a reasonable level of challenge for a video game, and by giving the player context through locations and conversations to make reasonable guesses of unknown words, allowing the player to start associating symbols with themes. Once the player has defined enough symbols in their head, they can begin to translate new words without needing assistance from the game. When you combine contextual clues, the English language structure and the knowledge of symbols, Ancient becomes a language that you start to read. The translations begin the game as an interesting gimmick, and develop into a puzzle so engaging and thematic that it doesn't even feel like a puzzle, though it still has a powerful aha moment every time you read a word on your own or figure out a new symbol. You are given a lot of assistance in the familiar grammar of the language and the multiple choice translations, so you won't really be translating a whole new language, but just like Guitar Hero, the whole point is to feel like you are. And I think that's good enough. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video or found it interesting. I try to avoid spoiling too much of Heaven's Vault's language because this is a game that I highly recommend playing if you're into pointing click adventure games or that idea of translating a language sounds interesting to you. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't, leave a comment, like the video, all that stuff, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.